This is a short video, well, I don't know how short it will be, about the second part of the Lab 2. And we need slightly more parts. In the first part, we only needed the breadboard, breakout board here, the Arduino. Um, what we will need now is a breadboard, the programmer, an 80 Mega 328 microcontroller, four wires for power supply. I chose two black ones for ground and two red ones for the positive supply voltage of five volts in our case here, and four additional wires for the programming interface, the interface between the programmer and the chip to be programmed. Also, we want to get an LED blinking, so we need an LED and a resistor. What I will do is I will first put our microcontroller somewhere onto the breadboard, like this, press it down, so it has to be sitting in the middle uh, with legs on either side of this uh, line here. As I showed in the lab instructions, if you want to lift out a chip like this, there is a tool which you have available on your places. These lab probes, multimeter probes, work quite nicely in order to lift out a chip from a breadboard like this. Then we also need to attach the programmer here. And I will go to the detail view for that. So here we see the breadboard and it has these markings plus minus plus minus on these long going lines. And we want to use these for our power supply. So on the program itself, it says VTG and ground, VTG and ground. VTG stands for target voltage. So the voltage for the target chip which we want to program. And so what we will do is we will put the programmer onto the breadboard so that it fits onto these rails. It's easier to do if you're not trying to stare into a camera at the same time or on, on a screen. So now it sits there and now actually both sides of the breadboard here, the rails are connected. The red one is plus and the blue one is minus. The red one is plus and the blue one is minus. And uh, also be careful with the orientation of the microcontroller. This notch here is actually marking the upper side. So the pin left to the notch is pin number one here. And then it goes down to pin number 14 pin number 15 up to pin number 28. So now we have power supply on these lines. Now we have to connect our microcontroller to the power. And for this, we will actually have a look at the connection diagram of our microcontroller. And we see that we have VCC, which is a positive supply on pin 7 and pin 20 and we have ground to connect on pin 8 and pin 22. So let's do that. Start with We start with VCC on the left side or lower side here. So goes into the red rail here and then we count this is number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then we <clears throat> know from the picture that ground is the next pin directly under it. So we connect our ground wire there. And that goes into the blue rail. And uh, then we see that opposite to VCC directly on the other side is the, under, uh, the other ground. So we take our other black wire and connect it over here. And then one below with one distance, we have AVCC. So we don't have to count all the pins. Once we have found pin number seven here, we just can go with relative positions with regard to this pin. And this goes into the, the red rail on this side. Now we have to look at the programmer itself. And 
for that we go to this view here. So we have these contacts up here. Here we also have ground and VTG. And then we have MISO, SCK, RST and MISO. And the uh, MISO stands for Master In, Slave Out and MOSI stands for Master Out, Slave In and SCK is a clock signal. So the data will be transferred bit by bit. We will see that later, much later in the course, how it actually works um, from the programmer chip into the microcontroller. We have to connect these four wires. So again, let's have a look at how it looks here. Um, and what we find, RST reset goes to the yellow pin number one up here. And SCK, MISO and MOSI we find down here on the right side directly next to our VCC pin. So SCK would be the direct neighbor and then comes MISO and then comes MOSI. So let's connect these up like this we have SCK I use an orange wire for SCK here and it goes to the one next to our VCC pin on this side then we have MOSI no, MISO sorry we have MISO next MISO is this one on the programmer it goes here and then we have MOSI, which is the rightmost pin on the programmer. It goes here. And then we have to connect reset, which is the one here in the middle, the second from the right. And it goes to our pin number one on the microcontroller like this. If you are putting your pins with a slight distance to the chip or the, your cables with a slight distance to the chip, you can have a much better overview over what's happening than if you try to crowd everything in. So, so push away the bits a little bit. And now let's see if everything is connected correctly. For that, I will connect our programmer, which has a mini USB interface with a mini USB cable. I find that mini USB connectors are mechanically more stable than micro USB connectors. Uh, that's why I chose mini USB for this one. Um, so I connected it up. Uh, Windows recognized that something happened. And let's have a look if we can get a connection to the programmer. In order to do so, we have to select another type of programmer. It's not the AVR109. It's actually a USB ASP. So it's far down in the list. It's down here, USB ASP, official DE. That's our programmer. And for this programmer, we don't need a port. Um, so whether it stands COM4 here or not doesn't really matter. So what we can try to do now is actually press detect and see if we can detect a chip. And uh, we see that something happened down here and it says detected an 80 mega 328P. And whether it's an 80 mega 328P or 328 without the P doesn't matter for us uh, right now. Um, but yes, the chip was correctly recognized and that means actually that we have connection from the computer to the programmer. We also see the lights over here on some kinds of the programmers. Uh, the latest revision of the board has these four LEDs over here. And uh, also that the wires which we connected here are correct and that we have power to our microcontroller. So um, this is actually a good test to find out where problems are. If I disconnect the programmer, what will happen is, so I, I dragged out the USB cable here, I disconnected the programmer and if I now try to detect the chip, then it will tell me that it couldn't find a USB device. So the USB device is obviously our programmer and it wasn't recognized by Windows anymore. So I will reconnect the programmer, Windows says ding dong dong 
and uh, now if I say detect then we get the message again that it is an ATmega328 which is connected. If I for example disconnect the reset wire or any of the wires going from the programmer to the microcontroller and I try to detect the chip then it will tell me that uh, programmer target doesn't answer. So there is no target to be programmed found on the other side of the USB wire on the other side of the programmer. But this way it should work now. So now we want to control something and we want to control an LED like we did in the lab one. So I have an LED here and I have a resistor here, a matching resistor, something between 100 and 1000 ohms should do. This is a new LED, so the longer lead is the positive side, but we could also test that if we wanted to. We connect a resistor between the, the blue rail, the minus rail, and one of these columns on the breadboard. And if I now take the LED and connect it to the other side of the resistor, then actually the LED will light up. If you connect the LED directly to plus 5 volt, then the LED will be destroyed. Um, so don't do that. And uh, what we want to do though is we want to connect the long lead to the last pin down here. Oops. Good. Buggy wire connection. Um, so if we look at our picture of the 80 mega, we want to connect it to the pin 14 down here. So the LED is now connected between pin 14 and a resistor, which then goes to ground. Or in, in just making a short diagram here. So we have our microcontroller here. We have pin number 14. From this pin, I have the LED connected with a resistor. In this particular case, I chose 150 ohms because I had it lying around on my desk. And the other side of the resistor is connected to ground. And now we want to actually switch on and off this LED. And this works in the same way as it did for the other microcontroller. So we will go to Admiral Studio or Microchip Studio and we start yet a new GCC uh, project here. I say OK. It will now generate project number 12. The chip which we have is a 328. Um, as I said, it doesn't matter whether it's P or not P. They are exactly identical um, apart from power consumption and even there they are identical. So I, I choose the base chip, the 328 here. We get a similar skeleton file here. This microcontroller now is not running at 8 megahertz, it's only running at 1 micro, uh, megahertz. So I will define f underscore CPU and tell the compiler that our microcontroller is running at 1 million, not 10 million, 1 million uh, clock cycles per second and I will also include as I did before the util delay.h okay the auto command auto completion stopped working uh, don't know why and now uh, it's almost the same as before, but uh, instead of E and the sixth bit, we are working with the zeros bit on B. So DDRB equals zero B. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and a one at the last position here. Of course, we don't have to write leading zeros, but uh, I do it in order to make it more clear here. What all this means comes in the next lecture. And then we are switching on the LED with port B equals 0B1234134. We wait a certain number of milliseconds. 
Let's wait two seconds this time. And uh, then we are switching off the LED by actually saying port B equals zero. And uh, then we put another delay here. And let's say we wait another two seconds. So now it should be on for two seconds and off for two seconds. I press compile in order to compile the code. And uh, this time it's only 178 bytes. We wrote essentially the same program, but it uses less memory on the 80 mega 328 than it does on the 80 mega 32U4. Not significantly, but well, noticeably. And now we uh, try to get this file into the microcontroller. So we go back to our AVR Dudes and we're looking for the new hex file, which should now be in the application 12 directory here. 12, debug, 12 there. And now I don't have to press anything on the uh, board itself, because we have a separate programmer. We don't have to switch between modes. This is always in programmer mode. And uh, if I do a program here, I press program, then essentially everything should work fine. Let's see if it does. And yes, it is, did. It says over here that 178 bytes of flash were verified and transferred into the chip. And uh, this is what we see on our board here. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. The LED is blinking according to the code which we just wrote. Um, one uh, little comment about the LEDs over here on most of the boards, the here yellow LED will be a blue LED, but don't be confused by that. So when you look at this programmer while I'm programming, we can also see that there's some activity. I'll do that under the detail view here. And again, I have some sloppy connections here. So right now you see that the last LED down there, that's off while the other three LEDs are actually on. Uh, the first two signal supply voltage. The first one means that the USB cable is connected. The second one means that our programmer chip gets a supply voltage. The third one means that we actually have an active USB connection to the host computer. And the last one will actually flash during the programming procedure. So if I press program now on Avia Dudes, we see that it is activated uh, while it transfers the data.